Good morning, guys. It's uh, Brother Paul here. I've got a dream to share with you. And I'm quite excited about this one because this is the way I used to first receive my dreams in this manner when I first started this ministry. So, thank you, Lord. It feels like I'm realigned with God. So, it comes with a bit of a serious message, though. It uh, This is the way God is seeing us right now, like as in the whole world. So he showed me within the framework of this dream, but it was very clear. And it's kind of funny because I was trying to go back to bed. Like sometimes I wake up and I write my dreams down and I go back to bed and the Holy Spirit would not leave me alone and kept giving me interpretation during it. And I'm like, okay, 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 I'll get up and I'll go and share it. So uh, let me just get into the dream and then I'll give you... Um, the type of uh, interpretation I got during it. I find this very funny because it's been a long time since uh, the Holy Spirit. I don't want to. I don't want to say the the term is teasing, but he would not let me. It was. It, I want to. Okay, how do I explain it? I'm from a big family. We were nine kids, and when I was young, and I shared a room with my little brother. When we, when one of us would wake up, the other one wouldn't let the other one keep sleeping. We'd like throw things at the bed and, you know, kind of like annoy the heck out of them until they got up. And I, I, forgive me, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit was annoying, but that's the way he was following me. Like, just get up. You got to share this. You got, oh, and I forgot to tell you about this part. And, and all this stuff was coming out. So it was really, it was really cool. Okay. So this is how it was a two part dream. And, uh, Sorry, I'm so close here, but this is the way it went down. So, um, the first part of the dream is I was I was shopping around for my favorite car. As most of you know, in my dreams, I don't do anything and I don't share anything unless I see my confirmation car. And if you're new to this channel, I'll re-explain it. So, I was in the middle of winter once when I had this incredible dream. And I have a very strong fear of God, so I don't want to share anything if I think it's from me and I test the spirits and sometimes it's too good to be true and I, I just I'm scared to share it so I in the middle of winter once I asked God to show me a summer car and I randomly picked a yellow Volkswagen Beetle and I saw it so ever since then I don't share anything unless I see that so in this dream I was shopping around for my favorite car my yellow Beetle Volkswagen Beetle um, there was a lot of people who loved it for the same reasons I did, but um, and not only the yellow color for most people, but the option of a convertible freedom. I found one and I bought one and I bought a helmet with it because it was a convertible one that I came across, but I wanted the protection over my head, so I got a helmet with it. And I brought this car back to my, what was a treehouse bedroom. Now, I don't really know what that meant, but it was definitely a house off the ground. And the bedroom I had, had I could open a window and I had a balcony beside it. And it was, it was beautiful. So this was one of those examples. Like the first part, I, I wrote it down and I tried to go back to bed. And the Holy Spirit was like, Paul, you're not getting it. The, the people that are trying to get this car, these are Christians. And when I was shopping, many of these cars were in a parkade in the dark. And I remember walking around this parkade and everything everything was in the dark. And these cars were everywhere, every type, every color. But they were in the dark, meaning people were hiding that they were Christians. So again, like I said, it was, it was kind of funny because I kept trying to fall back and sleep. I was so tired. I had a rough night's sleep. But... Um, he kept saying, Paul, like, pay attention to this. So, like, and then it dawned on me, wait a minute, why am I buying a convertible? That means there's no covering. But I was adamant in the dream about getting a helmet with the covering, which meant I cared about my covering of God. So that was the first dream. And the second dream, this was a really weird one. And again, this one I did not understand as it was going on. I woke up to a noise in the house and I just immediately remembered, wait a minute, I saw my yellow car in a dream. This is important. So I I closed my eyes again and I waited till the whole dream played itself out. So I was it was weird. I was awake, but it was happening in my head. So in the second dream, I had a friend who needed a loan and he needed it for a project. 
he wanted to write a paper on Jesus and he needed to clean up the frame of the picture of Jesus. And in this dream, the picture frame had paint on it and he was trying to wipe it off. Um, so anyway, at one point when we all got together as friends, I noticed that while we were talking, all I could focus on was the paint in the background. And the paint ground, it was, I guess it was my house in this dream, uh, or a made up house that was the one I was in, but the, the wall had baby blue paint on it. And it had bubbles and scratches and I, I was so annoyed that it was imperfect. And, I, and I'm like, I was so mad and I, in the middle of everybody talking and I noticed another guy that I know his name's Paul and he was wearing a green shirt and not that that matters, but I was obsessed with this paint on the wall. I wanted to clean it and I even was talking over there, talking and telling my wife, we got to change this, you know. So this is what I wrote. Uh, I had a friend who needed a loan for a project. He wanted to write a paper on Jesus. He needed to clean up the frame of the picture of Jesus. When we all got together as friends, I noticed the paint on the walls were tattered and covered in blue paint. And the paint was actually over a cardboard. And the background was blue. And it had bubbles and deformities everywhere. I told my wife we needed to take it off for repairs. And underneath the blue was blood. We took a brush to clean it off. Um, the water was cleaning it off more and more, but the cardboard showed more and more, and it looked cheap. And it wasn't there wasn't it wasn't nice anymore. Like the paint on the wall wasn't nice. So after noticing how much trouble we were going to to clean this up, I looked down at the sink and the devices. It was unbelievable. All the little devices attached to the sink to be able to use this cleaning device and it was such a big gimmick and and it was supposed to be to help us but it was actually quite hard and the water wasn't always coming up properly and it seemed everyone around me was happier leaving it as it was completely imperfect than showing its real appealing truth and afterwards the picture frame was down to its original picture frame and the wood around it was all broken. So this was another incident where I tried to go to bed. And the Holy Spirit's like, Paul, you're not paying attention to these details. So I sat up and he started to tell me what the interpretation was of this. So when you hear the writings on the wall, sometimes in examples or in uh, when people are talking, they're more obsessed with the details of what they're telling you than what's really there. So this blue sky or blue um, wall paint was full of imperfections and the regular people that aren't paying attention don't notice it. But as a Christian and as a believer, I was annoyed that it looked terrible and I really wanted to fix it properly. And this went side by side with this friend of mine who wanted to do a project on Jesus and he was obsessed with taking the red paint off the picture of Jesus because it represented the blood just like under this blue paint the blood of Jesus on the wall was covered with blue like people try to cover the truth they try to um, I guess downplay it is what I'm trying to say if you look at the gospel and you look at what it stands for it's 100% the way it should be so that you understand the stories. Just like Jesus gave all those parables and stories, they're there for a reason. And the part about the sink, this is this is what actually got me completely up, is I kept trying to fall back asleep, and God's like, that sink is the world, and it's full of devices, and people are putting gimmicks around the truth, and they're... It's all diversions and it's all like, it's uh, diluted, I guess would be the word. And then it hit me like, wow, he's talking about the world. He's talking about human humankind. Like we are just so much happier with all of our fancy devices and our gimmicks to maybe make our life funner in our own way or, you know what I mean? Like, so this is how God was telling me he was looking at the world right now. We are in a bad situation, and a lot of people aren't even aware of this. 
So I did wake up at 824, and I looked up what this stood for, and on the Greek side of it, it said, out of, out of place, which was attached to an Acts 28.6, and this is the part in that story of Acts when Paul was on an island, and he got bit by a snake, and everybody was scared of him, but when the snake just fell off into the fire, into the fire, they noticed, well, he can't be that bad. He must. Then they looked at him almost like a god, you know. So uh, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't get interpretation for that. I, I quickly looked it up. Like I said, Acts 28.6. So it seems like maybe this is how we'll be perceived when we're coming back to help out. I'm not sure. And there was a Hebrew version of the 824 Strongs, and it said a place in Judah. And I looked it up, and it was attached to three names, and I, and I didn't get any interpretation for that. So that's open to interpretation for you guys, if you know what it means. So anyway, I'm sharing this to tell you to get right with God, with Jesus. Get back to Scripture, get back to reading, and stay on the narrow path. Because things are going to change this year big time. I love you with all my heart, and Jesus loves you very much. And apparently the Holy Spirit wants you to hear this today. So may you have a wonderful day. Talk to you guys later. Bye.